Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to my channel. Thank y'all so much for stepping back in. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to see what I have to say. I promise y'all, it truly does mean the world to me. But with that being said, let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about Quant Network, of course. But more importantly, we're talking about EBA Day. And I know you guys may have seen things about EBA Day or saw a clip about, about EBA Day, but maybe you don't really understand what EBA Day actually was. EBA Day was all of the powers that be of Europe, banks and institutions and payment processors coming together and letting each other know what the roadmap is and the layout for future payments throughout the European structure. Follow what I'm saying on this. This is absolutely incredible to know that not only was Quant Network there, but they also were a presenter in a presentation alongside of central banks and I want to say, I believe also who's, who's on that stage was the European Commission or some, something like those, something like that. But I won't even speak on it specifically, but just know that major people in the European structure was there. OK, and that Quant Network was not only there, but Gilbert was there on the stage talking about the future of money in this country or the countries that utilizes the euro. Follow what I'm saying, but this first video is a lady from JP Morgan, and she is talking about SEPA. And if you don't know what SEPA or SEPA is, depending on what side of the pond, you may pronounce it SEPA, you may pronounce it SEPA. I'm going to say SEPA, okay? So, listen, more importantly, it stands for Single Euro Payment Area. And she's going to talk about that, but pinpoint how many times she says the word interoperability throughout the course of explaining the role of what SEPA is going to play moving for the future and towards the future of digital payments throughout Europe, okay? And to know, side note to that, how many times she mentioned interoperability and know that Quant Network is there alongside of them and what does Quant Network provide? Interoperability. Follow what I'm saying, you guys, with this first video, this lady from JP Morgan. Hello, I'm Debbie Bell Hosking for Finextra TV at EBA Day 2024 in Lisbon. And I'm chatting to Renata Villanova Lobo of JP Morgan Payments. We're talking all things SEPA, ISO 20022, innovation and resiliency. But first of all, Renata, hello. Thank you so much, Debbie. Delighted to be back at EBA Day. Thank you for the invitation. Let's first start off with SEPA. I mean, what do you see the cross-border impact of SEPA on European and global interoperability? So when we look at the G20 principles around payments, right? So aiming at delivering faster, safer, cheaper payments with more transparency. I think one key barrier that is preventing us from getting there is the lack of global interoperability, right? So this is really a key challenge that we need to overcome so we can really improve the way we operate within uh, cross-border payments. And I think SEPA has been extremely successful in uh, defining common standards, right, around uh, format messages and data requirements, uh, processing rules within the Eurozone. Um, and this is allowing interoperability within countries uh, in that zone. And uh, I think that the experience of uh, users when interacting through SEPA is extremely positive. And the same expectation we all have when interacting outside of SEPA. So I think that uh, you know, defining common standards is really critical for us to achieve global interoperability. And um, I think SEPA has proven the importance of those common standards in terms of improving the way we operate in the cross-border payment space. And I think it's really pushing other regions to, to do the same. So hopefully we'll get there very soon. In a way, it's a motivator, hopefully. Definitely, yes. Yeah? Now you heard the lady from JP Morgan. You saw how integral interoperability is for the entire system to work. You saw how many times she said it. Yo, if you counted how many times she said interoperable or interoperability, put it in the comment section, okay? So 
We're going to move forward to the next video. This next video is my boy, Maximus Crypto. You're the GOAT, dude. You rock. Nobody does quant coverage like Maximus, okay? Maximus is talking about the single euro payment area, okay? So you can really understand that we're talking about every single country that utilizes the euro as their currency, this will affect. And to know that Quant Network is right there, a seat at the table as these things are being built out, literally. It's like what their new slogan says. Their new slogan says, they are the foundation of digital finance. Really sink in to what I said. They didn't say maybe. They didn't say if. They said Overledger, the foundation for digital finance is their new slogan. So on top of <laughs> the foundation for building on blockchain, they are now also the foundation of digital finance, which means that not only just your blockchain and everything else is going to be associated with your blockchain operating systems that, that goes vast across many rails, we are now also the foundation for all of your central banks of digital finance. Like really, really put that in your mind and understand when this, comp when this company is saying something that they may say it very cavalierly, very, very nonchalantly, very, very a matter of fact, but not a matter of fact, not arrogant at all, but know the power behind words and understand what those words truly mean when it's being told to you. But anyway, that next video, the single euro payments area. Follow me on this, y'all. What SEPA stands for stands for single euro payments area. More importantly, part of the European Central Bank Euro System. The payment integration triggered by SEPA has contributed to the efficiency and competitiveness of the European economy as a whole by eliminating differences between national cross-border payments by harmonizing, again, some of the terminology here, standards in all the participating countries. All. Okay? Well, you see SEPA, instant payments, why banks need to act now. August 27, 2024. Remember that call to action? And more importantly, it says in 2024, despite the relatively good coverage with 71% PSPs, which means payment service providers in the euro area offering instant payments, the share of instant payment transactions and all SEPA payments, everybody, has only reached 17%. This has led to regulatory intervention to facilitate further adoption of instant payments under the new regulation. Payment service providers, PSPs, will be expected to implement instant payments in a short time frame for, or adjust, I should say, the implementation of existing instant payment infrastructures. All PSPs offering SEPA payments will be mandated to offer SEPA instant payments and charges applied by PSPs in respect to instant credit transfer, like I just showed on the other screen. Transactions in euros cannot be higher than the charges applied to non-instant credit transfer transactions in the euro. However, all PSPs in the eurozone would be required to enable their clients to receive CP in, excuse me, instant payments by the 9th of January 2025 and send SEPA instant payments by October 9th of 2025. Okay? And of course, as we know, this whole thing of quant and sepa already been there done that right they have had an established connection a long time ago but what is next for banks well the european union's move to accelerate the adoption of instant payments in europe puts pressure on banks that haven't yet implemented instant payments to assess their readiness to comply and prepare for the upcoming implementation again understand the significance of that so hopefully you guys leaving that video with just a little bit more knowledge about SEPA or SEPA and you truly understand what it is that they are rolling out right in front of you and understand that it will affect every single country that utilizes the euro. OK, it's no coincidence that Christine Lagarde has been talking about the digital euro now for the past two years and that they're out of the proof of concept and they're out of the preparation phase and they're now deploying it in there and go live. Digital euro is on the move. Yesterday, the governing council of the ECB approved the opening of the preparation phase. 
it will be a journey and we will walk the journey together with the legislator. All European institutions will be involved to make sure that Europe is equipped with the currency of the future. Follow what I'm saying, you guys. This is no coincidence that things like EBA Day happened and things like Quant Network being there and how important interoperability is and knowing that Quant Network is the king and the sole provider of interoperability. It's like on my last video, what did the UK government say about Overledger? It is the world's first and only truly interoperable system. Follow what I'm saying to you about Quant Network's Overledger and how they are providing interoperability to truly the powers that be because we're talking about governments, we're talking about central banks and multinational corporations like BlackRock and things of that nature. Follow me on this, y'all. This is major, you guys. Major. But anyway, this next video is coming from my boy, Mind Crypto, and we're talking about TC307. And understand that ISO TC307 is the global standard for building on blockchain. Understand what that means, a global standard. So once this standard goes live, that means everything that is associated and attached to the standard becomes basically world order, if that makes sense. But anyway, to understand more importantly, and remember how many times did that lady from JP Morgan say the word interoperability. So to understand that Gilbert Birdie and the CEO of Quant Network that has a product that he is now giving to the world of interoperability via his technology overledger, understand what I'm getting ready to say, and that he is a part of and created the blockchain standard ISO TC307. And to know that the working group that he is over in regards to the eight or nine working groups, however many that it is, is specifically interoperability. You have a technology that is interoperable that you have now basically sold, <laughs> not really sold, but sold as far as like presented to the powers that be, central banks and governments. We already went through my last video. Look and see, overledgers being used already by the UK government in 2024. Follow what I'm saying about Quant Network's interoperability protocol and the, and the blockchain operating system that they have created, overledger, okay? So, <laughs> Here it is, my boy, Mine Crypto, and he is talking about Gibber Birdian and what he is doing specifically in ISO TC 307. Follow me on this, y'all. If we look over here, we can look at the ISO Standards Committee, and we see here we've got we've got ISO TC 307 working working group seven. And if we look down here, we can see the convener, Mr. Gilbert Verdian until the end of 2024, can be reached through the Secretariat. Now, we know Gilbert, if we look over here, Gilbert is building the Internet of Trust by converging blockchain, AI, and cybersecurity as the founder of CEO of Quant Network, tasked with connecting the world's networks to blockchain. Now, that's a big, big feat, but he's there. He was the founder of ISO TC307. He was previously the CISO of Vocalink, the UK's faster payments provider, having moved back to London after two and a half years as CISO of NSW Health. Having over 20 years of experience, he worked across government in Downing Street, Her Majesty's Treasury, Cabinet Office, the Ministry of Justice and NSW Health and Private Sector as the CSC, EY and HSBC. Having a keen interest in disruptive technology, he's the author behind blockchain ISO standard TC307 initiative and is the chair of the UK's National Committee on Blockchain and Distributed Ledger Technologies. He's actively working to advance technology in the areas of AI, cybersecurity, blockchain and fintech and health. Now, if we go back here, we can see he's the convener of the interoperability user case. And when we think of that, he is literally creating the standards that connect to ISO 222. Now, everybody loves to talk about that, but actually when we look at some of these standards, ISO TC 407, and we've got the advisory groups, we've got the foundation for it, what these groups are doing is they're building the standardization and 
Gilbert being the convener of interoperability, creating a standard that's going to be required throughout the world. Now, this is no small feat, but he's right there in the mix and he's the founder of Quant network so you just saw you just saw how important gilbert's role is and as you can see when he when when mine clicked on that his name popped up gilbert verdian right there in the iso website follow what i'm saying y'all this is major this is absolutely major knowing about quant network in 2024 is major and if you know it and if you're not only retaining the information about Quant Network, but actually acting on the information that you're receiving about Quant Network and doing things with the Q&T token, not financial advice, but you understand what I mean, how happy you will be in the future. Because truly what Quant Network has done is given governments, central banks, truly interoperability in Web3. So a win for Quant is a win for the entire Web3 sector because they truly connect every blockchain to every blockchain that exists today and that will exist in the future. On top of that, it seamlessly, seamlessly connects blockchain to the traditional internet of today with zero lines of code, zero lines of code, truly understand that it is now plug and play technology. That bottom line to companies will save them money. Follow what I'm saying. And everybody, especially the big boys, love to save money. But with that being said, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for tapping in. And y'all already know. Wait, 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 wait. If you made it through this rant, type QNT in the comment section. That way I know y'all made it through the, to the end of this video. And yes, I'm biting off my boy, Maximus Crypto. I love you, bro. Until the next time. Peace out.